going to search for them. <laughs> they have to be searched for. Why? And enemy have And the enemy is hiding them. The enemy calls them by his name. to come and has come in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. There's no words we can use to thank him enough for forsaking the highest seat in the heavens and coming here to the hills of North America after you and I. As he said, nobody on this earth wanted us but himself. No one wants us. When he got ready to come after us, he didn't even tell the other scientists where he was going. They couldn't even tune in on him to ask him where, where he was going or who he was going to. Just one day, just stood up and said, well, I'm going to leave. Took off his holy robes, took off his crown of authority, and said he came to North America by himself. He didn't even ask one of the other scientists to come with him. Came by himself. Suffered his own self. He knew who we were. The lost members of the God tribe of Shabazz, the last remaining members of his divine family of that first self-created God. We are the last remaining members. That's something to think about, isn't it? Yes, sir. On the entire planet Earth. So he came to put us in a safety zone. He's bringing this devil's world to an end. So he came to gather up the divine members of his family and put them in a safety zone so we won't be destroyed along with the enemies. He came looking for one certain man, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the one the Bible prophesied in the book of Malachi. Behold, before the coming of that great and dreadful day of the Lord, I will send you Elijah, Elijah, Elijah. For this is our Savior's day. A Savior's bar. Thank you. A Savior is born. Yes, sir. This day. Go ahead, dear Mr. Dick. On the 26th of February. Yes, sir. Go ahead, dear Holy Father. A Savior is born to yes, save for you. Yes, that which was lost. Right. That's right. So, pray a Savior that he goes in search for him himself. Yes, sir. He don't trust nobody else. Even I, he says in this scripture, I will go. Right. No, not an angel. It's me. Yes, sir. I am the one. Yes, sir. I want to go after him. I love him. Yes, sir. And I have found him. Yes, sir. And I'm going to make him my people. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm not going to let him be ruled by another. Yes, sir. I'm going to be his God. Yes, I'm going to be the ruler. Uh, he says in the scripture, I will be their God and they will be my people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will not let another have them anymore. Yes, sir. I'm going to keep them myself 
and they shall always see my face. Yes, sir. Faith is due to all of us. To have our Savior for us. A people that is rejected and despised. Thank you. Yes, sir. Fall out of your name. The enemy runs in front of you to make enemies for you. Yes, sir. If you go to war with him, to fight for his freedom, yes, sir. to exist, to control and rule the black man, yes, sir. he there will make, war, make mockery of you. Yes, sir. In the Bible, <laughs> that he, meaning God, yeah. will send his angels. <laughs> Send his people from the east right. to gather you from the west. Yes, sir. Right. A savior has been born. That's right. That's right. The little fellow that is the uh, uh, the book prophesied of that would come in the end of the world, okay, and would be God's right hand, teach you everything that you want to know, everything, everything. You don't have to stop at one thing. Just exhaust yourself and try to find the first good way. Yes, sir. God has made me here with the answer. I'm that well in the Bible yeah. that never go to us. That's right. Yes, it's been said before you. If you don't believe it, start thinking. Yes, sir, and you never will be able to die. It is very hard to get you to see and understand the truth. What you think I adorn my head with this type of headpiece for? To come out here to you who have not this science understanding to it. What you think I do this for? To show up? Why well, should say no? I'm showing off in a way, showing you that the power of heaven and earth is now turned over to me. I'm not boasting. I just want you to know that which you don't know. The purpose of God coming never heaven and came to heaven, which you see. I am a man. You know, the mama said, that then wasn't just Allah coming in the person. Here come Matthew Rob Muhammad in the person representing some other Allah someplace else. Bigger and more powerful. This is the supreme being Allah himself. Elijah Muhammad taught me that Master Farah Muhammad's power and knowledge and wisdom is infinite. If there is nothing he can't do, how could there be some other? If there is another Allah someplace, he has to bow to this one. Elijah Muhammad told me this. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught me that Master Farah Muhammad has the knowledge and power to take the sun down that you see out there in the sky and then recreate another one by himself and not get tired in the process. Is that clear? Everything obeys him. He said all the atoms obey him. His word is just be. And it is. He can will a thing into being. He can will you out of existence. He can will you into destruction. 
Do you understand? So don't go get you getting some other idea that some other Allah besides Master Farah Muhammad. Master Farah Muhammad is a divine supreme being and his last and greatest messenger died to Muhammad. And I am his true disciple tell me comes up whether you believe it or not. Is that clear? And come here. So as a result, since he didn't want to be recognized until he completed what he came after, to leave a divine message with the Elijah Muhammad that would resurrect the dead, the mental dead. So he had to suffer. Why did he have to be born? Because the only way a savior could get him is to be born. Our savior is also called the Son of Man. The Bible says the Son of Man shall come out of the east and go into the west to save his people in the last days. And these are the last days. I should say the last hour, the last minutes. You don't know how close you are to a terrible divine chastisement coming upon the people like they did in Noah's time. Don't the Bible tell you that as it was the days of Noah and Lot, so shall it be when the Son of Man comes? Yes, sir. Well, the Son of Man is not to come any longer. He is here. Yes, and these are the last days. The Son of Man is also the Son of God. And the Son of Man coming in the last days is God. You say, how can this be? How can it be the Son of God and God? Because God is a man. And his son becomes God after him. His father to God before him. Right. He right. passes the Godhood and the secrets of God onto his son. Right. And that past one passes on to his son. We'll go into this a little bit deeper a little bit later on. Those of you who came out this afternoon and sacrificed a few minutes of your time, you're in for it. As I say, you won't be the same anymore. You will be, you will be happy. The purpose of this divine truth is to resurrect you from a mental death. And it does have the power to do this. Jesus sent his disciples. He took in the power, raised the dead, healed the sick, cleansed the lepers. When you have leprosy, you begin to turn white. Give them a black mind to go with their black body. Right now, they got black bodies and white minds. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Give them a black mind to go with that black body. Right. And you won't have to tell them what to do. They'll know what to do. All right, but like Muhammad said, this process of passing the God who from father to son has been going on for trillions of years. The only God who was not born and did not have no father and mother was that first self-created God, the original black man, and the God and father of us all. I know this is astonishing news to you, in other words, to hear that God, I can tell you God is a man, one thing. But if he was white, I was a white man, you could handle that. But to tell you God is a black man, you upset already. But before you go, I'll have you relax. You'll, you'll think you're God when I get you talking. And you are God. Right. Children of the Most High God. Remember, the Most High God. So don't try to take His place. The truth that only God Himself knows. And He is the one who came in the person of Master Fawad Muhammad and raised the honor of me like Muhammad in our midst and taught Him this great truth. Never known before by anyone on earth. He said the knowledge of who God really is has been kept a secret between 12 black holy scientists for 66 trillion years and passed on from father to son. That's a long time to keep a secret, isn't it? Yes, sir. 66 trillion years, especially when you can't keep a secret for five minutes. If someone gives you a secret, don't tell nobody. Five minutes later, you're telling somebody the same thing. No, I'm going to tell you, don't tell nobody. You would tell a thousand people with the same secret. The last and greatest of them all is Master Farad Muhammad, who inherited the throne from his father. His father's name was Alfonso. And he begets not, nor is he begotten, and there is none like him, and never will be none like him. He will not be begotten by a wife, or woman, or no man, nor will he beget any children. He is independent of everything and everyone. So he comes forth and makes himself a son, a special prepared son, a spiritual son to pass his secrets on to. This, that special prepared son is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and he is not dead as yet. Everyone dies sooner or later, nothing, no one lives forever. But he's not dead as yet. Allah took his messenger out in a divine secret manner. Right. You understand? Yes, sir. That's in order to manifest the hypocrites, make them think he's dead to manifest the hypocrites. Right. 
But he had told us a long time ago. Where did they show Abraham in the Bible where they saw Elijah die? They didn't see him die. The Bible tells you Elijah went to heaven whole soul and body. Right. Right? right? Yes, yes, sir. He said, where can you look in the Bible and show a grave site where they buried Elijah? No, no. Allah took him out of the divine man. And he has manifested many hypocrites. He is the one found in the book of Revelation, the first chapter, saying, I am he who was dead mentally. And who you thought was dead physically. And buried in a segregated cemetery in Chicago. But I am alive now forevermore. And I've got the keys to hell and death. I've got the key now. I can lock you in hell. Or I can open the door up to heaven for you. He said when he does die, Allah told him that his body will be petrified and last for hundreds of thousands of years of years for people to be able to come and see what that last expression of God looked like. The body of Jesus, the great prophet Jesus, wasn't put in no round no place. His body was bombed by the Egyptians with a secret and bombing fluid to last for 10,000 yes, years. Yes, His body is right now in Omar Temple in Jerusalem. This That's is a right. secret the devil won't tell nobody. Right. Only ones of devils and nobles are the 33rd degree high degree masons. Right. And they have to pay $10,000 to the Pope of Rome, pick up on who they're paying the money to. And they get a certificate, certificate from the Pope of Rome. Right. Then they can go and see the body of Jesus yes. Yes. once they have 33 degrees. At the same time, they reveal another secret to them, the greatest secret of all. Push with his ear and tell him, you are the devil himself. Right. There's many devils walking around, don't even know that they're devil, but all their these 33, 3 million Muslim sons, they call. They know the truth. They don't even tell, they're not allowed to even tell their mother or their children the secret. So these devils are all walking around proud and arrogant, in other words, and calling us all kind of names of the black man, and here there's the devil himself. That's why they hate Elijah Muhammad's name. Right. They don't want you to mention Elijah Muhammad's name because he's the one that God sent to preach him to pull the cover off him, so to speak. The Bible also says, I am he who was to come and have come in my father's name, Muhammad, the praised one. One praised much and worthy of praise. It is written, me and my father are one. When you see me, you see the father. He said, I am your long awaited savior. I am the one the whole world has been looking for to come for the past 2,000 years. I am the one with the keys to hell and death. Elijah Muhammad is the one who was to come and has come to save you and me. The reason he has the keys to hell and death, which is great power and authority, because it is written, the Father turned the power into the hands of the Son to go out and conquer the world. Then after he brings the world to its knees, now this is right in the scripture, after the Son brings the world to its knees, then the Son turned the power back into the hands of the Father. But in the meanwhile, the Son had the power. Right. This is a great teaching. This is a great day. You will learn more here about yourself and about God in a couple of hours than you will learn in a whole lifetime. Of course, our law can teach you more in five minutes than you can learn in a lifetime. Right. That's right. This is divine movement. Once you get hooked up with our law, don't be surprised at what kind of divine things come to take place. Once you say you believe in our law, it brings you proof. Right. It makes you That's strong. Right. That's right. He manifested that you're not seeing wrong, that you didn't accept something that's wrong. How do you think I lasted for 45 years? This is 45 years coming up. He revealed to me, I know this is the truth. I know he's the God. I know who Elijah Muhammad is. Yes, I don't believe it. I know him. Yes, sir. The most ancient, the most well-kept secret in the universe is who God is. The divine supreme being of the universe. A secret kept between a circle of 12 black men for 66 trillion years. You could say almost forever. Master Farah Muhammad broke the circle when he came and revealed the secret to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He is the 12th Imam, the one the Orthodox Muslim world has been looking for to come at the end of the world. And the Christ, the Christian world, has been looking for. He is the divine supreme being himself, Master Farah Muhammad. And the other 11 scientists know which one he is. In the circle of 12, one of them is a divine supreme being. 
There's actually 24 elders making up the heavenly host of the rulers of the planet Earth. 24 elders, the Bible speaks of. 12 minor scientists and 12 major scientists. The secret of God is guarded so closely, they don't even tell the other 12 black minor scientists which one he is. The 11 in that circle of 12 know which one it is. That's the supreme being. The others, they know there's a one that's more superior and more wise than they are, and they're all very wise and powerful. But they think he's somewhere else. They don't even, don't even know that he's right there in their midst. He can tune in on all of them and know what they're thinking at all times. But he can tune them out whenever he desires to. All of these great men can tune in on each other and tune on, each, on us anytime they want to. Just like you have with a radio or a television set. You understand? But Master Farad Muhammad has the power to tune them out. They don't always know what he's thinking. He said when he got ready to come after us, they couldn't even tune in on him and know what he was doing. He just one day he just took off his robes. Think about this. Took off his crown, put on his western style clothes, and left the heavens. They didn't even have the power to question him. Where are you going? What are you getting ready to do? I'm getting ready to beat him until I'm getting ready to make a new heaven and a new earth. Think about this. It's going to change the rulership even in the heaven. I'm going to put the rulership back in the, the rightful hand of the real original owners. And the original owners are the lost members of the God Tabi Shabbat over in America called Negroes. Right. Is right. that clear? Yes, sir. He, the divine supreme being, as I said, the other never know who he is. Now, since the secret has been passed on from father to son among these 12 black holy scientists for 66 trillion years, now the question must be asked. Why did Master Farah Muhammad break the circle and come reveal the secret to Elijah, one outside of the circle of twelve? Just who really is the honorable Elijah Muhammad? Since the secret of God is passed on from father to son, and Master Farah Muhammad begets not, nor is he begotten, and there's none like him, which means he will not be begotten by no woman or man, he will not beget no physical children, he will not have no physical sons, Therefore, he must raise for himself a spiritual son and then become so absorbed in that spiritual son until the two become as one. Think about that. Become so absorbed that when he's looking at one, you can both of them. One day at a sacred day meeting a long time ago in Chicago, I saw the two as one. He blessed me to recognize this and then acknowledge that I was seeing right. When I saw that he was, he was who he was, that he was actually Master Farah Muhammad I was looking at, after the meeting was over, there was a big crowd of people. They wouldn't allow me to get nowhere near. I tried to get up close, I wanted to shake his hand. But the captain wouldn't let me get nowhere near, so I stayed on, outside the crowd. He walked all the way through all those crowd of people that came straight to me and shook my hand. He let me know mentally, yes, you were seeing right, you wasn't seeing wrong. And I bear witness I was seeing right. Yes. Yes, sir. The spiritual unenlightened will have you to believe that we will never see the Honorable Elijah Muhammad again or Master Farah Muhammad. No, we won't ever see the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as the Messenger of Allah. We will see him absorbed in Allah as Master Farah Muhammad. The Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Not anybody's temple, his temple. He said the two are one. When you see one, you will see them both. When one speaks, they both will be speaking. When one acts, they both will be acting. But the spiritual unenlightened will have you to believe that you might as well be satisfied with so want to be Silas Muhammad, as you're saying, and asinine, so want to be Wallace D. Muhammad, as the divine mind. I hope you hear this tape. Yes, sir. And wishy washy, Minister Lewis deviating, Minister Lewis Farrakhan, as the Holy right. Apostle, as he calls himself, right. Right. or allows himself to be called called that by his ignorant followers. Right. Yes. Which is the same thing as calling himself. If I permit you to call me something that I'm not, that's the same thing me calling myself that. Right. The three of them remind me of Father Divine, Daddy Grace, and Prophet Jones. Yes, sir. These are the false prophets. Right. Think about this. That had, they were in the spotlight about 30 years ago. And these phony false prophets had thousands of ignorant worshipers and followers, just like they do today. And the devil will hold them up in the spotlight, along with Martin Luther King, the Black Panther. Some of you remember these men I'm calling. 
Right. Stoke and Carmine. That's yes, Reverend Carl Perry. Uh -huh. And Bishop Witherspoon. Yeah, that's him. Right. To try to offset the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, that's right. I always hold these men up. When you see the devil hold up somebody, you better run another direction. That's right. right. That's not who you should be with. That's right. right. The one that you should be with, the devil don't want you to know yes, that. Yes, sir. Right. What they're saying to you is don't pay any attention to Elijah Muhammad. Look at these black leaders that I'm advertising for you and holding up for you to follow. What I look like, a devil holding up somebody saying in the spotlight, that's the one, all the go that way. I'd rather go follow up, leave my own stuff than to go the way he directs me to. Because he has to prove to be no friend of ours. He proved to be an open enemy. So don't follow them. I want you to go to hell with me. And the life of home wants you to take you to heaven with him. And I don't, that's the last place, place I want to see you go. I want to see you in hell all the time. I don't even want to see you enjoy no heaven condition. Mm -hmm. He says himself up in heaven while he lived, doesn't he? Yes, sir. Right. But he wants you in, and I in hell while we live. Right. And when you accept Christianity, that's what you end up in hell while you live. Right. Give me one minute, I think my horse might be going to go with this. <clears throat> I still don't take my time, so. Yes, sir. Rush me back. Maybe, maybe, so you won't get it. Everybody stand for a couple of seconds here. Yes, sir. Let me your legs up for a bit. Stand for a minute. You can sit right back now, but I had to kind of relax your muscles there. You know, when you sit for a long time, your legs go to sleep. Now you may sit that up. Yes, sir. 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 Y
They can't think for themselves, most of them. Once they get the health education, they desert the black men and women on the bottom and begin to speak and act against the poor black men, just like the Caucasian white devils. I've heard, oh, I don't go down in that neighborhood anymore. I don't go near them. They are lazy and good for nothing, and they will rob you. That's the very word that mimic of the devil. Every other people on the planet Earth who are real leaders of their people will go out and seek a better education, then come back and help their poor people who are less educated or uneducated. Right, right. They will work and even send money back to help the poor people. All these Uncle Tom Negroes ever want to do is use the poor black man and climb to greater heights. They always want to socialize with white Caucasian devils who actually despise them behind their backs. I think that's enough of that now. I think we should be here to celebrate Savior's Day, but there's a few things I need to tell you. And uh, this is Savior's Day 1994. And this might be the last Savior's Day we celebrate on this side. As you saw in the leaflet I passed out, by the word, I believe this could be the year. I'm not going to say the devils know the year. The wise devils are one of the white people. They know the year that they're coming to the end. But they don't know the day or the hour. There's a certain year where everything will be building up to a certain day. And all kind of things, divine plague will be coming upon them. The rain, hail, snow, flood, earthquakes, hurricanes. All kind of terrible divine chest coming from our law to bring them down to their knees, cripple their economy, cripple their power, you understand? Take their power from them. Then on a certain day, the end will come. Now, I'm like Muhammad said, our law, Master Rabbi Muhammad told him, said we could take them out, actually. He said, take my time. We'll get rid of them in 24 hours once the judgment begins. He said, if we had to, we could get rid of them in 12 hours. We can get rid of them almost in a twinkle of an eye. That's the kind of power our law has. He said, I'm going to be using power that never has been used since the earth of stood to get rid of this devil off of our earth. He said he cried. He said, what he's going to have to do, and the people, the men, the people that he has to kill, he said, Matt's rough, I'm going to actually cry. He said, I hate to do what I was born to do. And I'm saying all praise and due to all law. I hope he's ready to do it right now. Yes, sir. So we came here to celebrate Savior's Day, and this is a great day. It might be the last one, because it's very close to the end of it all. The devil's time is already 80 years overdue. All religious leaders teach that Satan the devil's time ended in 1914. I know you've heard that before. Satan the devil's time ended in 1914. But they didn't never tell us who the devil was, did they? They had us thinking that the devil whose time was up was some invisible spirit. Be careful, guard yourself against the devil. If the devil's an invisible spirit, how could you protect yourself or guard against an invisible spirit? That's right. That don't even make sense. Of course, invisible means something you can't see. So if you can't see the white man is the devil, then you can't protect yourself. But I see him very well, and I know he's the devil. seven times worse than the white devil. Right. In some instances, I'd rather be dealing with a white devil than a black devil. Uh, right. Because they're seven times worse. So the white man has been living on grace for 80 years. In the black man's time, he was even in our time. When his time ended, it was time for the black man to rule. He couldn't take over the rulership because he was asleep. He was mentally dead. So the time that is allowed, allotted to wake up the black man, do you understand? It has given the white man a period of grace. That's why we're asking you right now, wake up, brother, trying to shake you up. Wake up, brother. You don't have no time to be sleeping now. Right. If you don't wake up right now, you're going to die with this devil. Right. Right. But the black man in America won't wake up from his middle of death. Even though our law, the most merciful, has prolonged the time to keep from destroying him, along with the Caucasian white devils, who have been scheduled for a lake of fire ever since they were made, 6,000 years ago. Yes. Did you know that there was no white people on the earth beyond 6,000 years? Right. Did you know that the white man actually is a random man from the black man? Jeez. Think over that now. 
That's why the Bible says, let us make a man in our image. Who do you think the us was? A black leader by the name of Yaku with 59,999 dissatisfied black people who rebelled against God. And God cast them out of heaven along with Yaku. And Yaku took them to out of Patmos and grafted them with a birth control process. Grafted these black people into white people. Right, right. A curse came upon them and taught them all kind of evil and technology to rule the black man and master the black man here. Since they were so evil, God put time on them, 6,000 years. He said, the end of 6,000 years, I'm going to come and throw you in devil, you make your coup. I'm going to throw them into a lake of fire alive. I'm going to burn every one of them up alive. I'm going to also burn up all who follow them. I'm going to burn them up also. This is Savior's Day, 1994. Yes, sir. What a great day. Yes, sir. He said, this man's already so I haven't even got started yet. That's right. That's right. This is just an introduction. I've just been introducing you what I'm getting ready to tell you. Yes, that's right. i got a whole lot to tell you, so I say you better sit back on your seats and relax. I've got a whole lot to tell you. Yes, sir. It's all about you, how great you are. That's right. The purpose of all of it is to wake you up. So you can be put on top of civilization where you belong. Right. You don't belong in the bottom of civilization. You belong on the top of civilization. Right. right. You are a tribe of sleeping gods. Right. Do you understand? You're described in the Bible. A living dog is better than a sleeping lion. Right. The lion is the king of the jungle. You understand? But if he's asleep, the dog can rule. That's what's going on. The lion, the great black man, the right owner of the earth, he's asleep. And the dog, the white man. That's how you spell God, D-O-G, backwards. The dog, he rules. But when Leo wakes up and lets out that roar, that mighty roar, the jungles go to jungle. Everything in the jungle gets excited. They say, uh-oh, the king is awake. Do you understand? Yes, sir. But some of you, in other words, you great king, I don't know what I can wake. I'm trying to shake you up here. I know you're that real deep deep. I'm trying to shake you real hard. And maybe I might need to get something to come out there and slap you up the head with you. <laughs> I'm determined to wake you up. I have the power to wake you up. That's right. If you didn't want to wake up, you shouldn't have come here. Yes, sir. If I didn't get to you as yet, get up and leave because if you stay here, I'm going to wake you up. Yes, sir. With, the, with the power of Allah, not myself with the power of Allah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The birth of our great Savior, Master Barak Muhammad, February 26, 1877, the holy city of Mecca, Arabia, in the east. The Bible says the Son of Man would come out of the east and go into the west to save his people in the last days. Save them from what? The doom and destruction of the devils at the end of their time, which is now up, and 80 years past due. Remember in the Bible where it says, just before Babylon was destroyed, an angel appeared, a holy man from God appeared, and his warning said, come out of her, you my people, warning God's people. He wasn't talking to everybody. Everybody couldn't have been his people. That's why he said, come out of earth, you my people. He wasn't warning the devils. You understand? That you won't be partakers of her plague and her sins. So you won't be destroyed with them. So that's what the angel's telling you now. Come out of her, you my people. Right. Unless you want to suffer the same doom that she's going to suffer. So Savior's Day is a great day. As presented and taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. It's a day, great day of spiritual enlightenment and happy news for the sincere truth seeker. Yes, sir. Who is seeking higher wisdom of God mm -hmm. and want to be delivered out of the hills of North America. If you're tired of this hell. Right. right. If you satisfy the sanctifies and ignorance, well then stay on here and wait to see you see what happens. One thing I can tell you, you won't have long to wait. Right. The disbeliever, you don't have long to wait for the proof. The proof is on the way. D-E-A-T-H. Is that your doors and windows knocking to come in? This is what Elijah Muhammad said to tell you. There is no wisdom higher than this. If you're seeking higher wisdom, there's nowhere you can go. Even wherever they're holding a Savior Day meeting today. Or any other kind of a meeting. Right. And here what Minister Tariq Hamza, the true disciple of Ali Elijah Muhammad, is presented to you this afternoon. Yes, sir. I would challenge them that they cannot ascend as high with the supreme wisdom of God. That I will take you to this afternoon. I will take you up to the mountain peaks and carry you across on a strand of hair to the Elijah Muhammad. He said that is the only way you'd be able to get over to where you would be in the last days. On a strand of hair, 
just between two mountain peaks. The wisdom will ascend so high that some won't be able to ascend spiritually up that high to comprehend what's going on. Right. The light shining in the darkness, but the darkness comprehending it not. The great truth and wisdom of God coming to the black man, but he wasn't able to comprehend it. There is no wisdom higher than this. On this day, Savior's Day, we do not teach just the wisdom of God or about God. We teach the wisdom directly from God Almighty Allah in the person of Master Barad Muhammad. That's right. Since he came himself and revealed this supreme wisdom to the honorable Elijah Muhammad in person, there are no questions about God that goes unanswered that we are capable of asking. If you don't believe it, try Every question you ever had on God before you ever came here, before you leave out of this afternoon, every question that you're capable of thinking of will be answered. Many times you've looked in the mirror and said you don't know who God is. Nobody said nobody sees you in the mirror. You don't wonder who you are. How many times have you done it, looked in the mirror and asked yourself the question, now, who am I? What's my real question? What was I born for? I know it because you don't know who you are. I've done the same thing. Until I met the honorable Elijah Muhammad, then he told me who I was. Yes, sir. In the past, the question to God is it always been a mystery to everyone in all times. Bible scholars and scientists have spent a lifetime searching for the answers of who or what God really is. They never got the answer. That. Therefore, they couldn't write it in no books for you to go read because they don't know themselves. Right. Now here comes a little black man from the cotton fields of Georgia in the South with a third grade education from the devil's world with all the answers. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the last and greatest messenger of our law to ever come to the earth. Where did he get the answers from? You can't say the white man because the white man did not know the answers himself. And you can't say the black man of the East because he also has been put to sleep. And don't even mention the so-called Negroes in America, because they are mentally dead and buried in a grave of ignorance. They don't even know who they are, not to mention who God is. So where did Elijah get the answers from? Who God really is, where God comes from, even where that first self-created God came from. He got it from God himself in the person of Master Rock Muhammad who came in disguise July the 4th, 1930, and revealed himself to the honorable Elijah Muhammad and taught him secrets about God that no one on earth has ever known before. Just think of this. No one on earth has ever known before. Outside that circle of those 12 black men I just mentioned to you. He left heaven, which is in a secret place on earth, to put on dying garments, western bound clothes, and came to hell of North America in disguise. First making himself known in Detroit, Michigan in 1930 as property called himself Prophet W.D. Farrar. Right. He didn't want to be recognized, so he didn't say who he really was. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad first said he first met him in a public meeting in 1931. He said when he first saw Matthew Farrar Muhammad, he recognized him as being a divine man of God. He said he was suspicious that he was not more than that. Just a prophet from God. This reminds me when I first started on him like a hunter myself. I had been following him back in 49 when I accepted him. About a year or two before they had the first Sabre Day meeting. At that time, there was not even no picture of Elijah Muhammad. Just think of that. In 1931 and 1949, he, he wasn't trying to exalt himself. No kind of work. You understand? And, and at the time, not only there was no pictures of him, we just called him this Brother Elijah. So on my way to the Savior Day meeting, I'm happy because I'm getting ready to see this great man like Muhammad. In my mind, I thought he was going to be some great big robust man. I'm prepared to see some big robust man walk out there, you know. Yes, I figured he was God had to be some great big man. And then we'll forget. And there's a whole lot of speakers coming before him. Finally, they hauled attention. And he walked this little man about this big, little short of nine. And he walked over there and bowed and said, As-salamu alaykum. When he did that, my hair stood on edge. I took one look at him. I said, oh, yeah, I said, that's the man. I know that's him. Right. Then when he began to speak, you know, he didn't have no high education in the devil's world, so he's spitting birds and saying, you know, different things, you know, not uh, proper English. And I, right away, you know what I thought? I said, 
I'm not paying attention to what he's saying, how he's saying it, pardon me. I said, I'm listening to what he's saying. And I asked, I said, do you see hear what this man is saying? That's right. Not how he's saying, but what is this man saying? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And a little bit later on, I was suspicious like he was. I was suspicious that he was more than who he said he was. That's right. And I was right. Because later on, in other words, then he, he took on the title of the Holy Apostle. The last messenger of all along. When I first met him, he, was just, he called me Brother Theodore and I called him Brother Elijah. Think about this. But I was always very humble in his midst because I had a feeling that he was more than who he said he was. Right. He was always that real humble. And, oh, I'm just your little brother. I said to myself, you don't bring that little brother stuff to me. I know you're more than just a little brother. Right. You're more than just a big brother. Right. You understand? Right. I'm looking at, actually, almost looking at God himself. That's right. That's right. In the flesh. Because he said the two was one. So he said when he first saw him, that's the problem. Muhammad he recognized him as being more than just a prophet. Later on, he became one of Prophet W.D. for Ross ministers. Then he was taken under his wing, so to speak, and was privately tutored day and night for three and one half years. That's when he revealed to the honor of Elijah Muhammad who he really was. That he was a really God Almighty Allah himself in person. <coughs> Then he proved to him by showing some of his power. That's something to think about, isn't it? Yes, yes sir. You're suspicious of this man being more than what he said, and then he starts showing you his power. That's something to scare you after death, isn't it? Yes, sir. Some of you need that, maybe to shake you up a little bit. Mm -hmm. His name was Elijah Poole at the time. He was wearing the last name of the slave masters from plantation days, like all the so-called Negroes in America are wearing. Right. That shows up people don't have the knowledge of self. They're all wearing the, the white man's last name. They're all in the white man's religion. Yes. They're all speaking the white man's language and don't know nothing about self at all and get angry if you try to tell them yes, about sir. self. That's yes, right. Yes, Even though you tell me who I am, I don't want that. I still want to wear the white man's name. Yes, I want his religion. Yes, sir. Think about this. Sanctified in ignorance. Right. Baptized in ignorance. Right. You hear the ignorant person, you can't tell me nothing. But I bet you I can show you something. I know when our Lord reaches out and gets a hold of your hide, and the Lord will show you something. That's right. That's right. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when he comes out, he comes out your roof. You're so proud. Burn up all your babies and keep you alive to suffer. Right. Take your children. Have them all in prison. Right. Suffer. Go in the electric chair. Right. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All kind of things. Your daughter's being raped. Little young son being shot down in the street, and you go sleep at night. So you'll find out why that's happening soon. So he taught him day and night for three and one and a half years and then showed him his power. He taught the army Elijah Muhammad who he was then. His name was Elijah Poole at the time and he was wearing the last name of the slave man. And he taught him he's the Elijah spoken of in the Bible. In the book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 5, where it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Right. Let you know now, before the, just before the end of the world, I'm going to send you Elijah. Huh? Elijah Muhammad said, since the, that's the last book of the Old Testament, just before the end, I'll send you Elijah. Then the New Testament should have opened up with the coming of Elijah. But instead, they opened up with the coming of Jesus, the dead prophet Jesus 2,000 years ago. That's a misinterpretation of the scripture, done deliberately by the white man to throw you off track. Right. That's he knew that God was going to come and reveal him one day, but he wanted to have the people so brainwashed. That when the truth came to you, you would accept it. And the Bible tells you, you shall know the truth and what the truth will do. The truth free. will set you free. Yes, it also says at the end of Malachi, it says, Elijah's coming to be the end of the prophets. Right. The next one you look for then should be God. Mm -hmm. Then Matthew Rob Muhammad told Elijah he was assigned him to a divine mission to go raise and warn God's secret of so-called Negroes of an impending doom coming upon North America, styled as Babylon in the Bible. If you want to read where we are, go read the 18th chapter of Revelations. He said that's where we're living at right now. When you read the 18th chapter of Revelations, that's going on right now. Right. He said that America was at the top of his list for total destruction for the evil that she had done to God's people for the past 400 years called the lost sheep in the Bible. A lost, bully headed people. Meek and humble like a sheep. A sheep will not fight back when you come to kill them. Right. The sheep must have a shepherd who loves the sheep. 
to protect them from the enemy, especially the wolf in sheep's clothes. God, like Muhammad said, that God told him that nothing that the devil can do to be forgiven for what he has done to God's people for the past 200 years. Right. They've been so evil to us, there's nothing he can do. That's why they're going to the lake of fire. They can't be forgiven, and you can't reform a devil. Right. All the prophets of Christ don't think you're going to reform a devil. We're all going to be together like Martin Luther King is saying, right. and like even Minister Farrakhan is saying, we're going to be in one world together. And, and what was the Muhammad? The, the world community of Islam. You will never see that. Right. East is east and west is west and never the twain shall meet. Right. The black man is a black man and the white man is a white man. Never the twain shall meet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's not your brother. He's not your father. Yes, you are his father though. He yes, came from you. Yes, sir. The Bible tells that they will honor your fathers and mothers that today may be late. Yes, sir. If you want an extension of time, that was honor the black man. Well, that's your mother and father. That's right. Has he honored us? No, no sir. sir. This honored us and killed us and raped us and done everything you can think of to us. That's right. Is that clear? So yes. he don't get no extension of time. He's not even worthy of it. Right. He didn't get this extension, this 80 years of grace because of his own self, something good that he did. That's right. God just wants to have mercy on us. He wants to give you and I time to wake up because he right. can't deliver you as a savage and take you to an advanced civilization. That's right. You have to qualify. That's why he sent his message to train us and qualify us so we can leave here and go live in an advanced civilization. Yes. Where people are civilized yes. and humble and righteous and meek. Do you understand? Yes. 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 Muhammad said that the so called Negro that are lost members of the God Fellowship Walls and that we are blood relation to that first self created black God who made and created the Son. He told him, Elijah, I'm giving you the key to go raise them for a mental death out of a grave of ignorance. This is the meaning of the resurrection of the dead from their grave on the judgment day. He said, if not one will follow you, Elijah, bring the key back to me. And we will both go and leave them to burn in hell with the Caucasian white devils. I want all the followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to think about that this afternoon. Who believe that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is dead. If he is dead and took the key with him, then we have no salvation. And please don't mention the dead prophet Jesus Christ coming back to save us, who was murdered on the cross 2,000 years ago by these same devils, who have been murdering and lynching us unjustly for 400 years. And we are not capable of saving ourselves in the midst of a most wicked and powerful devil, especially most of the people, the so-called niggas, with them being mentally dead at the present time and buried in a grave of ignorance, and scared to death of the devil. That's right. In fact, some of you sitting here right now, you recognize this is being the truth, but you are scared to death. Oh my God, that's right. God, right now, what a good job. Mm. But you don't know if you don't accept the truth, you're going to lose your life. Right, right. That's right. William, I've been following him for 45 years, I'm not worried about no job. Right, that's right. In that's fact, right. he, he'd rather hire a Muslim than he would anybody else. That's, that's right. right. Because he knows we're honorable, dependable people. We're not going to steal from it. We're going to give him an honest day's work. He knows we honor all men that do honor, even though we know he's a devil. We still honor him if he's due honor. So he'd rather hire us. I've had devils call me, tell me, would you send some of the Muslims down here for a time? Think about it. He don't want the others because they're going to steal. They're going to go hide. They're going to get drunk. They're going to have the time on the weekend when they get paid. They're not coming back to work. So he'd rather hire us than to hire you. And he knows we're teaching these the devil. When I see the devil, he's always bowing down. Think about this. Shake my hand. Right. In fact, they know I'm teaching these the devil over here today. When I asked, I said we're having a convention over there. I'd like to have some special consideration for parking out there because you know during the, on a Saturday you have to put money in the meters. So the chief of police, you see those signs out there? No parking. Police orders. The chief of police of uh, what do you call this? University right. Heights. He called me on the telephone last night. Told me, he said, I wish I could give you more, but I wouldn't give you those. I said, what about if they have a, if a snow, they have to have a snow band? He said, if they have a snow band, he said, you won't be affected by it. Yes. yes. Then I go over to the Medusa and met the man over there at the Medusa parking lot. He said, I'm happy. I shook hands with him, gave him a high degree shake. I raised the up a little bit. Yes. <laughs> I said, when he got his car and came back, oh, yes, yes, you can park Whatever, just, just contact me. So we have, we have a better relationship with devils than most of you have. Right. And they know what teaching is a devil. Right. A white man owns this building. He's a Jew. 
Right. But Mr. Birnbaum, whenever he sees me, he's humbly submissive. Right. Ask him. He's very nice. He treats me with great respect. I treat him with great respect. Right. Right. When I go to his house, he always wants me to come in his house. He wants to serve me food and drink in his house. Just think over that. Teach me with the utmost honor. What I did, I knew when I got here. I said, I know some old Uncle Tom to go around and say, hey, you know, they're up in here teaching the white man the devil. So what I did, to upset that, I called him in, I go to my office, just me and him in my office, and I taught him that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I said, so when they come up, you know, of course, I you know I signed it up, you know, and let you know who he's a Jew and so forth, but I let him know when they, they come and tell you, yes, we are teaching it. But I said, but they didn't tell you that I'm also teaching the black devil. That's right. And the black one is seven times worse than the white man. Yes, sir. I want you to keep that in mind when you go out there talking about the white man. They say the white man is the devil. No, I'm saying you are worse than him. Yes, yes, sir. A black devil. There you go. Make it. So we get respect. We the Muslim. When you come into Islam, you get fake respect. You have to respect a civilized person. Intelligent. Always got his own mind and acting intelligent at all times. Intelligent demand respect. That's right. And I want you to know also, ignorance will never be able to rule intelligence. Intelligence will always be the ruler of ignorance. Right. right. And I'm going to let Muhammad has taught us intelligence. Christian fathers of Europe, right. according to their doctrine. 
That's not all they're allowed to preach. Or he will revoke their license. He can't revoke me because I don't have no license from the devil. I can preach the truth. Yes, sir. Is that clear? Yes, sir. I can talk about them old devil Anglo-Saxon fathers of Europe. Right, sir. He better not do that or they revoke his license. Yes, sir. And scare him to, all of us scared to death. Right. So every one of Noah's people drowned. In fact, even one of Noah's sons drowned. Right. With the disbelievers for joining in with them and making mockery of his own father. Do you know who the God was who sent Noah? It was Allah with right. the God who sent all the prophets, including Jesus of 2,000 years ago and Elijah Muhammad of today. That's something you didn't know. The white man didn't tell you that. That Allah, that Jesus was a Muslim. That Jesus was teaching Islam. The white man hated Islam then and he hates it today. That's why they killed Jesus. He was teaching the truth and they didn't want to hear it. He even preached that they were a bunch of devils. Look, look at him. I told you Yaku was the one who created him. Look at Jesus telling them this. In the 8th chapter of John, the 44th verse. Right. Are you learning something? Are you waking up a little bit? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you're not quite awake as yet, I got, I got a few more things here. Undercover that will wake you up. Here we are. Now this is very careful to help you get some understanding. Here's Jesus talking to them. He said, I know you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. He said, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. I want you to take note now. There's two different fathers here. He said, I'm speaking that which I have seen with my father, and you're doing that which you have seen with your father. Yes. Look at their answer. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Right. But now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. They said unto him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. That's what you hear all of us talk about. Oh, the same God made us all. We're all the same. That is not the truth. We're not all the same. Right. The black man is not the same. He didn't have the same father that the white man did. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself. He sent me. I could say the same thing to you. I didn't come of myself. He, like Muhammad, sent me to do this. This great work. He said the hardest job any man has ever had to do since the earth was to do. Had to make all kinds of sacrifices. Suffer all kinds of things. But at the end of the work, the great reward is waiting for you. If you can endure to the end, if your age will be turned back to 16. You'll have mansions, so valued at $17 million. So much money until you won't be able to count. That's some reward, isn't it? Yes, sir. The Christians preach all that by going to heaven like this, but they got it all spooked up. Right. That they're going to this place after the physical dead of the cemetery. You are, it is a place that you go after you're dead, but not after you're physically dead. And when you're physically dead, that's the end of it. Right. That's why you don't want to die physically. If you believe you was going to heaven, you say, oh, come and jump in the castle right now. <laughs> you fight to not die. Oh, please don't kill me. What if you want to go to heaven? I should meet you when the, evening, when the temple's over here. You want to go, okay? Boom, boom. Right. I'll send you to be with Jesus. Right. He'd fight, wouldn't you? Right. Yes, sir. Oh, please, I don't want to die. Why not? Don't you see, in your own mind, tell you that that's not the truth. Your nature is built against that. All right. He said, why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. You are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of lies. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinces me of sin? And I say the truth. And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God, hears God's word. Listen to that. He that is of God, hears God's word. Right. But you therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. That's what I can tell you. If you was of God, you wouldn't hear these are God's word. You would pay attention. Right. But why don't you pay attention and understand this? Because you're not of God. 
So you won't receive the reward from God. Preaching so hard to you trying to get you to wake up on it. Lucky by the devil running nose. Just about a month or so ago, I, was, I had more than a running nose. I was really in the season in the hospital. They were expecting me to die. Death did. Allah brought me back. Right. In fact, he took me all the way up to the door of death. In fact, beyond the door, he took me a little bit inside. Yes, sir. I was submitted, ready to go. He wanted to see if I would submit all the way to death, and I just submitted all the way to death. Yes. Except he got me a little bit inside, he brought me out again. Uh, now I'm alive forevermore. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I didn't say I had the key, but I didn't say I didn't have the key. <laughs> but all praise be to Allah. As it is written, as it was in the days of Noah and Lot, so should it be when the son of man comes. Matthew, Barak, Muhammad, and Elijah is the son of man. And these are the last days. The end can come at any minute now, when you least expect it. Don't think you have a long time. I'm like Muhammad said, every sign that was predicted before the end has already been fulfilled. Everything that was supposed to take place has already taken place. The only thing that hasn't taken place is the deliverance and the devil going into the lake of fire. You don't need no more signs, is that clear? Yes, yes, sir. So it can come at any minute. Don't expect some other special sign. And when I see that sign, I'll come running. No, no. It can come at any minute as you sit here. Yes. However, before that final day comes, many of the so-called Negroes are already dying all kinds of miserable deaths for their unbelief and going through all kinds of untold misery. Whole families being burned up alive. Your sons and daughters being shot down in the streets daily and going to prison at an early age. Right. Every family with drug addicts and drunks plaguing the family. Yeah. Even so-called respectable families are affected. Mm -hmm. Why don't you ask yourself, why are these terrible plagues coming upon our people? The Christian church has no solution to the problem. They're on the air, in fact, all the leaders out there asking you, what is the solution? Yeah. Elijah Muhammad had the, had the solution and the solution is divine. They right. reject the real solution. So therefore, they have to suffer the consequences. Right, that's right. The only solution is Elijah Muhammad's divine solution. Yes, sir. What's the divine solution? Total separation from a race of devils. That's right. Yes, sir. That's right. Total separation. That's right. So the church don't have no solution. The police department have no solution. The city, state, and national government have no solution. And the problem is getting worse by the hour. Right. With the worst yet to come. I want to put that in your mind. You think, all oh, these terrible things are happening. Aren't these terrible? But you don't know the worst is yet to come. Why is this divine test happening on the so-called Negroes? And what is the solution? Because you have turned down God himself, who left heaven and came to the hell of North America to save us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. You say, I don't believe that. Well, then keep on suffering divine test timing with the worst yet to come. Then said, you won't believe. Uh, it'll grab you pretty soon. You keep on, Allah keeps on chastising you and the members of your family. You'll, you'll get the message. If you don't get it this afternoon, then there's something planned for you that you will get the message. So Elijah Muhammad had been sent to us like Noah and Lot just before the destruction came upon them. Master Farad Muhammad, who is his birthday was celebrated today, February 26, 1877. He is 117 years old today. Born February 26, 1877. This is February 26, 1994. That makes him 117 years old today. Yes. I know I'm before you now fill your mind with disbelief that our baby is 117 years old. You call this absurd and ridiculous. Think about the Jesus Christ who you say is your Lord and Savior in Christianity. Uh-huh. He had a birthday, December 25th, 1993, so you claim. That would make him 1,993 years old, wouldn't it? <laughs> so before you go to laughing at our 117-year-old, say, we think about you 2,000 years old. Yes, right. The 
foolish Christians also called Jesus' birthday December the 25th Christmas and Santa Claus Day. And Christmas is a day of deception and lies. And the phony Santa Claus gets more attention than Jesus. You can't say he does. That's right. The deceived Christians also believe that after Jesus bled to death on the cross, he got all of his life's blood and water back and came back alive. Then floated up in the sky. You say he ascended up in the sky, and they call that the ascension. And then he sat down on the right hand side of God. And he's been sitting there for 1,993 years waiting to come back and save the same devil Christians who murdered him 2,000 years ago without a just cause. So a man 117 years old, and the person of Master Rob Muhammad, who said, who read the Muslim says our Savior, is not so absurd as you first thought, is it? When compared to the lies you believe about the Jesus story, the one who you claim is your Savior. The Bible tells you that God's people used to live to be hundreds of years old before they died. Right, that's right. Noah even preached 120 years before the flood came. Right. Methuselah lived to be over 900 years old. That's right. And many of the old patriarchs mentioned in the Bible during Abraham's time lived to be three and 400 years old. It's in the Bible, isn't it? That's yes, right. Sir. Sarah was having babies at 99 years old, almost 100 years old. Right. You know, like Muhammad said, you can live as long as a thousand years and you can still have all your faculties work. You can still have babies at, a, at 500, 900 years old. Of course, all the whiskey you've been drinking, all the food you've been eating, you can't have a baby at 30 years old. That's right. And you do have one, they produce crack babies. They may become already addicted because you use so much. You have a lot of people in America walking around over 100 years old. That's right. I even have some of my relatives who live to be over 100 years old. One who lived in Cleveland was 114 years old when I met him. They had him in Jet Magazine as the oldest man in America at the time. Right. His name was Yancey Duff. I talked with him. He was in slavery and he told me what happened to them on the devil's plantation. How evil the devil used to treat them. I mean, he really did. Take him out in the snow. He said, have him in the snow, with, in the cold, with, with a chain on their ankles. Think about this now. And when they freed up, he just take it off one chain and they put it around another. When one of them would die, he said, just kick him off the side and cover him up with some snow, come up with some dirt, with their foot, and walk away from him. Leave him. He said, just like the wood of an animal. He said, they were very, very terrible. He said, they didn't give him much to eat. That's why all of them were still using no fat slaves. Right. They didn't give much to eat. They had to sleep in, in, in conditions that some of the animals lived in better conditions than they slept in. So he told me quite a few things. He said, God is going to punish them for this. I said, yes, they are. They're going into a lake of fire. My Uncle Remus was there at the time. I said, oh, no. He's a, he's a white, a black white man with a white mind. He said, oh, no, they were punished already for this in World War I and World War II. My cousin Ramsey said, oh, no, in other words. He said, you're wrong. God promised fire from heaven, from the sky to destroy them. Think over this. And that's what is on the way to them. Right. They get away with that. They think they've got away with it. Now they're going to go build a new world order after all the devils that they've done to our people. That's something. Uh, I mean, when this new world order, order comes, where are we going to be? Right. They're going to be up on top. They're already on top. Right. And the black man on the bottom. So today we have a Savior who was born to save us and to destroy the devils in the lake of fire. Born February 26, 1877, in the holy city of Mecca, Arabia. You say you have a Savior who was born? A flesh and blood? A man who's going to save you? A man that goes to the toilet and uses the bathroom? Where did your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ come from? Wasn't he born? Wasn't he a man of flesh and blood and a human being? Right. Did he use the bathroom after he ate and drank like all, all, all other human beings? Right. How could man be created in the likeness and image of God if the Bible states if God was not a man himself? with the same form of human being. Only God, Elijah Eli, Muhammad taught us, is a perfect man, a supreme human being. Right. Not only was Jesus born, they killed that Jesus 2,000 years ago by nailing him to a cross, so the Christians claim, and then told the big lie that he died to save your soul. I'm only pointing this out to you to show you that whatever truth you hear this afternoon about Master Farad Muhammad, and his last and greatest 
messenger, the honor book, and light to Muhammad. No matter how much it might tax your breathing faculties, it is the truth. And it won't be no way near as absurd and ridiculous as the Jesus story. That's right. Which means a lie. That's right. The Immaculate Conception. The story of Jesus, mother, the Virgin Mary having a baby without a man, the Holy Ghost was his, was his father. They call that the Immaculate Ascension. Immaculate, immaculate Conception. Just think about it. a ghost making Mary pregnant. Then the rest of the Jesus story is after Jesus died on the cross, he gets his life back three days later. He rose from the dead on Easter Day. The rabbit on Easter Day. Now we got the rabbit coming in on the scene. On David's resurrection. I want the sincere truth seeker to think about this. They're making mockery of Jesus. Right. You understand? The lying devils. On Jesus' birthday, December the 25th, the deceiving devils called that day Christmas. And he showed Santa Claus sailing through the sky on a sled with reindeers pulling, right? Right. A red faced white devil with a beard. <laughs> on a sled up in the sky, reindeers pulling. <laughs> on the day Jesus was supposed to have risen from the dead, the devils called that day Easter. And they show you a rabbit in a nest surrounded by eggs. Not just rabbit eggs, but even multicolored eggs, rainbow colored eggs. <laughs> Different colors. Yeah. What's the more of the Jesus story? Which means that Jesus lied. When you tell a story, that means you tell the lie. That if reindeers can fly, then Jesus was born on Christmas Day with the Holy Ghost as his father. Mm -hmm. And if rabbits can lay eggs, then Jesus rose from the dead on Easter morning. Mm -hmm. Three days later. Right. And you know the lie. They said he died late Friday evening as the sun was going down. Right? right? Yeah. And he rose early Sunday morning. Right? right? If you check on it, late Friday night, to late Saturday night, that's one day. Right. From late Friday night to late Saturday night. That would be... Sunday. Oh, the problem. Late Friday night to late Saturday is one day. Right. From late Saturday night to Sunday, early Sunday morning, would be only two days. Right. But once you're physically dead, you're going to have to rise up in one day or two days or 10,000 days. That's the end of it. Right. And you know that's the end of it. So I'm going to come and all stuff like, I went back home. You didn't see no mama, you probably saw the, a coat hanging around the there or something. You know. <laughs> so spookish minded, you all act like you're seeing ghosts and spirits. That's them. But once you're physically dead, that's the end of it. My <coughs> conclusion. I know you're saying, you mean to tell me he's coming to a conclusion? I didn't come all this way to hear the truth. He's coming to a conclusion. I am coming to a conclusion. Let us get into some deep talk about God, Allah, the divine supreme being, and why our Savior, Master God Muhammad, had to be born, and how he became Almighty God, Allah. When we look deep into the matter, Allah is an eternal office that lives forever. The office never dies. It is the office of the divine supreme being of the entire universe. Yes. It is the office of the Most High God, the God of all God, the King of all kings, the Lord and Master of all lords. The God holding that office can die and does die, and pass the office on to one of his sons. He can live as long as a thousand years if he wanted to without growing old or ever being sick. But the office never dies. He don't want to live beyond that, in other words, in that same body, knowing the same thing. In other words, pass it on to his son. Whoever holds that office has all the power of that office. Right. And it is the office of unlimited power. The office of the president of America is similar to this. The office don't never die, the president, right? The men holding the office die, don't they? They change. But the office itself never dies. Whoever takes the office of the president don't he have all the power that the office offers? Has the power of the last president, doesn't it? Yes, yes sir. sir. That's an elected office, however. But the office of Allah was set up by, the, by that first self-created black God, the father of us all. It is not an elected office. You can't be elected to that office. It is an inherited office. That God holding that office is born with the very nature and attributes of God, the supreme being, which he inherits from his father. Are you with me so far? Yes, sir. When he is just a young boy, 
being prepared to take his father's place. Whenever the father came in and turned over to his son, they start preparing him at a very early, very young boy. Exactly. His father just whispers into his ears to remind him who he is. He takes him up into the mountains, far away from all eavesdroppers, as a young boy, and reveals to him all of his secrets, and teaches him how to use the supreme power that he's born with, that he don't even know that he has himself. I'm telling you some things about yourself that you didn't even know. You don't know what power you have until you get wake up there a little bit. Which was inherited from that first self-created black card in the beginning. That's what we're going to talk about this afternoon. That first self-created black God who created himself in total darkness, then made the mighty sun to give him light so he wouldn't have to remain in the dark. That's why he was a black God, a black man, because he had to create himself in the dark, total darkness. Remember now, they tell you that God said, let there be light. If he said, let there be light, he wasn't in the light already. When he said, let there be light, he had to be standing in the dark, calling for the light, didn't he? Right. Where was any bright red place where he get any, any light or color from? He understand, he had to be a black dog. God, like Muhammad said, the Savior taught him that that first self-created black dog said it took millions of years to create himself. Turning over and over in the dark, total darkness, developing himself from a tiny atom of light rotating in the dark. This tiny atom of light was so small, so imperceptible, so insignificant, that even the darkness was unaware of his presence. As I say, this has a whole lot of divine spiritual meaning. In the dark, there was something there in the dark, in other words, uh, that they didn't know was there. The darkness thought he was the supreme guru. You've heard the saying, the light was shining in the dark, but the darkness comprehended it not. He didn't know that the light was there. The darkness did not know that there was something in the dark that could or would emerge and come forth and overcome the dark. But the only black Muhammad said that insignificant tiny atom of light kept turning over and over in the dark, building itself up until a brain was created. Then a body was developed to house the brain. All of this, you know, you this is what got you all oh, like that. Where do you think you came from? Did you come from a little tiny atom? A sperm that was dropped into the womb of your mother? And after nine months, think about this. Then that little tiny, so little, you couldn't even see it. You had to be in a microscope to look at it, right? Yes, sir. But yet, but that was in that little tiny sperm dropped into the womb. Here you come. A brain developed, didn't it? Yes, sir. Don't you see what happened in the very beginning when that self made it go? So don't, so don't go saying that this can't be, because that's where we all came. Is that clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. And don't talk about going up in the sky because you're already in the sky. Right. You're in the sky rotating right now. Right. You say rotating in the sky. That's where you are, rotating in the sky on a planet called Earth, aren't you? Right, yes, sir. Thank you know that, but I just have to put you close with you already in the sky. Yes, sir. Talk about going up in the sky, you're already there and didn't even know it, did you? Yes, sir. You know, you, and you're moving out pretty fast. You know, I know how fast you're rotating right this minute. We're rotating right now on the Earth, 1,037 and one third miles per hour. That's right. That's how fast the Earth is moving right now on its way around the sun. What do you think, in other words, it takes it 365 and a fourth days to make a complete circle around the sun? Well, how did it get around the sun? It wasn't traveling at some rate of speed. So at the rate of 1,037 and a third mile, we, we make it around in one year. At the same time, the Earth is also turning on its own habit. It. It's turning and rotating. Do you understand? When it's turned in this manner, you have a shadow, you can't see the light, the light's always there. Do you understand? But when the Earth turns in a circle and you're on the underside, the shell of the Earth blocks out the light. The light is always there. Right, sir. So after a brain was developed from water, he said, all oh, this took millions of years. And then he came forth as a black man standing there in the dark, rotating on the cocoon he emerged from, which he had made around himself to develop and to teach. Yes. Now you call it a little water sack there, you know. Isn't that what we were born in, a little sack there? Yes, sir. Like a little water sack. There he was standing there in the dark, 
absolutely dark with a black body, black skin, black eyes, black hair, a fully developed black man. One day one asked me, what about how you going to see it was all black? Didn't he have some white teeth? When you first born, do you have any teeth? Good question. What did he with teeth? He hadn't made no food as yet. So what did he need with teeth as yet? Right. You understand? What about the white around his eyes, in other words? That don't come in, the sight didn't come into the sun with me. You gotta have a sun for in order to have eyesight. That first self-created black man, the God the Father was on. He didn't want to remain in the dark. So he called for the atoms to come forth and form themselves into a light to bring him out of the dark. His word was only be. And they heard his command and obeyed and came together and formed the greatest light that's ever known called the sun. His sun. Now this is a deep subject and I don't want you to all go. It's not for everybody. Some of you are bound to go to sleep with some of this. In other words, it wasn't for you. In other words, it wasn't given you to know this. That's why Jesus spoke in parables to his disciples. It wasn't given to all the people to know. But those of you that I'm not going to wake up to go to sleep. Those of you that's awake, that's why Allah wants to hear what I'm saying to you. But those of you that want to sleep, in other words, remember Jesus' disciples went to sleep. He has some important things to tell them, but they went to sleep. Nobody told them, sleep on now, it's okay, go to sleep. You missed what I had before you, nothing you missed. It. So if you go to sleep, just sleep on. After he had made his son, he commanded the son to start turning and rotating around him. His command was start turning willingly or unwillingly. The son obeyed and said, I will turn willingly around my creator. The light of his son was so powerful and so great. Until the dark had to withdraw into almost infinity. Think about it. There he was in total darkness. There was no light nowhere. Now he makes the sun so powerful until the dark had to withdraw into infinity. Can't even know where it went. The dark had to withdraw so far away that you can't see out of the light. Where the light ends, where the dark begins. This means the dark and the light both had to submit and bow to our law. That's something to think about. Yes, sir. One had to withdraw and flee away to almost infinity. And the other had to start returning around his creator. So he's a man of the dark and the light. Yes, sir. Yes. Picking up on all that? Yes, sir. Master and both. Right. One had to withdraw and flee away. And the other had to start returning around his creator. Before that first self-created black man came forth, there was no God. There was no creation of anything or anyone to be the God over. Why am I teaching you this? I'm teaching you the knowledge of yourself. I'm teaching the knowledge of who you are. Right. Great black man and woman. If you say there was a God before that first self-created black man, since nothing or no one existed, then you would be the God of nothing. That's right. If you say there was a God before him, then he was the God of nothing because there wasn't nothing. Nothing but the darkness. But nothing in the darkness. When that first black man came forth, he was a God of something even before he made the sun. You say, what was that? He was a God over himself. That's right. He created himself from nothing and became something. Here we are with nothing. Right? For the darkness. He's coming. In order to become something, he has to come all from nothing. Right? Yes, sir. Long way over here from nothing a long time at first thought. Become one. Take you all as one go. Right. Took him millions of years to turn over in the dark to come from nothing to something. You understand? Yes, sir. So he became the God and creator and master of himself. The only guy's mama taught me that you have to master self before you can master anyone else or anything else. Don't go trying to read, talk to me, don't try to read another man's mind unless you have perfect control of your own mind. When you get perfect control of your own mind, then you know what the other man is thinking. I told you I'm going to put all the things on your mind today. Yes. That first self-created black man was greater than the sun because the sun did not make itself. I know you can even imagine a man being greater than the sun. Well, our law is greater than the sun. Because he made the sun. The sun didn't make him. He made the sun. Right. And who is our law? Uh, uh, the original black man. Yes. Right. The sun is material. The sun gives light. Right? Uh, yes, sir. What would an invisible spirit need with, with all of that? Yes, an invisible spirit is immaterial.
material itself. So the sun is a material light, giving light and life. The sun doesn't just give off light, it gives light also. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the sun didn't make himself. He made the sun, and he has power to destroy the sun. This is why the sun has to obey him and turn around him once every 25 days. That's right, the sun has to turn once every 25 days in its own orbit. All the rest of the planets are rotating around the sun. It is the magnetic power of the sun forcing them to turn around the sun. The reason why the earth is moving out at that speed is because the magnetic power of the sun causes it to rotate. You understand? Hold it right in a special, in its own orbit. Forced it to rotate. If one of the planets decides to get out of orbit, like the so-called Negroes are now out of orbit. Not in their own right orbit. Then the sun exerts its mighty magnetic power to force it back into its right orbit. If the planet refuses to go back in orbit, the sun don't argue with it. Immediately, just burns it down, disintegrates it. Right. In other words, get back in your orbit or I'll burn you up. Right. Are you getting the message? Yes, sir. Get right. back where you belong in the nation of Islam and the Almighty God of Allah is going to burn you up. He's the Lord and Master of the Son. When he first came forth, he named himself Allah. Think about that. Well, he didn't know Allah before that. There was no one to name Allah. But when he came forth as a fully developed black man, he named himself Allah. And don't try to sign to them, like the Orthodox Muslim would, that some spook God or an invisible spirit Allah made that first black man. He created himself. Then named himself Allah. Right. Right. Everything in the entire in the creation in the universe came about after that first self-created black God. Yes, right. Nothing or no one existed before him. When you say the Alpha and Omega, you're talking about the black man. That's right. Go out and do some research. See if you can find anyone or anything that existed before the black man was here. Right. right. You can't you try to find out the age of the black man. You can't find it out. You don't know where he began or how he began. Right. I'm telling you now how he began or when. Trillions and trillions of years ago. You understand? Yes, sir. But nothing existed before him. I'm almost through now. Filling your head full of wisdom, you know, like you find there in the 23rd Psalm. He anointed my head with oil, which means wisdom in my cup runs over. In other words, he put so much knowledge and wisdom in my head, my head can't contain. I'm trying to hold on to it, but it's running out. Making me lie down in the green path. You know they don't mean path. You in hell. Right. <laughs> Nothing out there where we are, nothing where you got us right now. Right. Neither do I walk through the valley of the shell of death. I won't fear no evil, but thou art with me. You in hell, the shell of death, you understand? The valley of death. But we don't fear no evil because the Almighty God our laws. That's right. That's right. That's right. Almighty God, our law, divine, supreme being, all wise and all powerful, the original black man and God of the universe. After he came forth and made the great sun, he would find himself. There was no one to praise him or admire him in the great creation of the sun. He was lonely. So he made from, from himself a female companion. He made her, made her in such a way that from this companion he could reproduce himself in nine months. It would not take millions of years like it did in the beginning, creating himself from nothing. Why? Because he has something to work with now. It's much easier to make something from something than to make something from nothing. So it's much easier to go from one to two. When you go to two, you have something to work with, right? When you go to three, you got something to work with. All the way up four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These are all independent numbers. Then you got to go back to the zero, right? Yes, sir. You got to go pick up that one again. And the zero. If you notice all these numbers, they're independent. Each one of these numbers have power within themselves. They don't have to be attached to some other number, but, they, but they're dependent upon the one because they came from the one. They're not independent of that one. See, you got all that one, God. Is that clear? Yes, sir. All is independent of everything. Think about this, nothing. Think about this, that he has to defend the point because he came from nothing. Right. Yes. You can yes, see 
reason why he wouldn't want to end up look. Took him millions of years to come from nothing. And in those millions of years, while he was turning over and over, he was figuring out then, I gotta get a way, better way to do this. Can you imagine the changes he was going through? The patience he had, that's why all of this whole patient. Millions and millions of years. Think over that. To make it so you a human body. You can look at that and tell that wasn't something that struck in those short length of time. It took him millions of years to develop this body. Think over this. And then he designed it in such a way, the whole universe is right here. You say, how does he control and master the sun? With himself. The power to master the sun is with himself. The power within him is causing the sun to rotate in his orbit. And the sun knows that. He knows that he's not his own boss. Even though the sun has great power, you know when you have that kind of power, look at all these things rotating around me. Look at all the power that I have out here. Create life and death and so I can take dead earth and bring it back to life. The sun is powerful, isn't it? Yes, sir. But I got a boss. Do this thing. I got to bow to him. He's greater than I am. He made me, so I bow willingly. When he said bow, turn willingly, unwilling. Makes no difference to me, but because you have to turn. And why has it always been in this? Why don't nothing ever go wrong? Because they're all put under a divine law by Allah. It's impossible for anything to go wrong. Islam is mathematics. Mathematics is an exact science. When you use a mathematics in its proper term, it's impossible for anything to go wrong. Is that clear? Yes, sir. That's why the earth has been turned. Look how trillions of years, not just thousands of years, the earth has been turning around the sun trillions of years. Don't ever get tired. Think over that. What a mighty God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What a mighty son he brought forth. Yes, yes, there wasn't no one to praise him, so he made him a woman. I don't know now how long it was after he made her, how long it was after he was here before he made that first one. He didn't tell me that. But I do know that after she was made, he could reproduce himself in nine months by going into her and depositing the germ of life from himself in her. Right. The developing process still had to be in the dark and water, but only took nine months. Right. You understand? Yes, sir. Still had to be in water. But in the dark, because no life can exist without water. You know, I'm like my talk to is if you find out how old water is, you'll be getting real close to how old our life is. That first self-created black man. No one don't know what his age is. You understand? He said, no beginning, don't know what the beginning was. But he said, if you ever could ever find out, calculate how long, how old water is, you wouldn't be have him up tight right there knowing how old he was, but you'd be close to his age. The light that comes forth can be male or female because both are needed for the continuation process. Right. But the male is most powerful and the god of the two. And the secrets of God are passed on to one of his sons, not one of his daughters. Right. Teach. Right. Is that clear? Teach. Teach, brother man. Like some of the, the uh, what's those movies out there? The more time. They think a woman is God. Right. No, no, a woman is not God. Do you understand? She's a companion of God, in other words, but she can't uh, sit on the throne of God. Right. A man that always has been to God. In fact, I would refer to God as he and him. Right. King and Lord and Master, types of a man. Yes, sir. So a woman is not God. A woman has a great, great high place. Yes, sir. We can't do it without her. Right. The God couldn't reproduce himself without her. That's right. You understand? So she has a very, very important place to play. Right. But she don't go try to sit in his throne. She comes up there, she sits on her throne. That's right. Don't even attempt to sit in my throne, sit up in your throne. Right. What about you? I can sit in both of them if I want to. Yes, right. 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 So when he passes it on to one of his sons, God would, that's still him in another body. His mind. He don't have to stay here forever in the same body. He can keep on evolving as time passes along with a new body, but the same mind. Do you understand? Because since time began, with this coming forth in the beginning, everything has been evolving and changing and growing and expanding since the beginning of time. Trillions of years of change and expansion has taken place since that first self-created God came forth. And I know you're aware of that. So the mind of God has to evolve with time. 
or else he would come forth with his own mind behind times. He would not recognize the changes that have taken place in his own universe, which he is the God over in the original creator of. So the original creator has been evolving through time for trillions of years through his own sons. Am I coming through clear? Yes, sir. Yes. father to son. The only black Muhammad said Allah taught him that he revealed all of his secrets of God to his son, except one. That was the secret of how the son was made. He wanted to reveal that secret. He said, I can't change that no kind of way because one of my sons might come forward, something might go here while he go out there and destroy my son. And then I had to go back and recreate myself again. From nothing. I'll be million years to create myself again. So I'm not going to tell that secret to nobody. I'm going to keep that secret to my own forehead. Didn't reveal it to no one. So they could not pass on that secret from father to son. No one has ever known the secret of how the son was made until the birth of Master Farad Muhammad. He came forth one of that great secret in his forehead. He had the same mind as that first self-created God in the beginning. Now he realized Muhammad said he came forth wiser than his father, who he, who he inherited the throne from. Yes. Wiser than all his great great grandfathers who had the throne before him. All the way back to that first self-created God who made the son. He has the same mind, think about this, as that first self-created God. Now he realized Muhammad taught me in fact that he unraveled his son. When it came time for his father to take him up into the mountains and reveal the secret to him of God, to pass the God over to him, he said he revealed all the secrets to him except how the son of me said, Son, I've taught you everything there is to know. Even how you have the power to master the son. But you don't know how it made it. Our, our first father didn't tell us how it was how he made it. Neither do we have the power to take it down if we want to. But you do have the power to control it if, necess if necessary. So I can't tell you that. But after he told him all the secrets, it activated the brain cells in his little son, Master God Yes. He wasn't master yet. But they all took that title master. After he activated his brain cell, he started remembering the past. He started, his mind kept going back and back, remembering the past. You can remember too, can't you? You go back and remember. I remember mean, when I was eight, I was seven. And you get to a point you can't remember no more. You can't remember when you was in your mother's womb and go back beyond that. You understand? But there is a past there that couldn't be remembered if he was able to do it. So he kept on going back until he, until he remembered how the sun was made. That's what I like about the said he unraveled the sun. And he said, Dad, I know how the sun was made. You know what his dad had to do? Had to take off his crown. Now I got to take off my crown. I got to bow. Yes, sir. The greatest that there ever was. Yes, sir. Only like Muhammad taught me that there's nothing that Master Prophet Muhammad can't do. His wisdom and knowledge is infinite. Nothing impossible for him. Nothing he can't do. He had the power to destroy the entire universe by himself. And recreate it again by himself. Think about this now. He had the power to replace the present son with another son by himself if he chooses to do so and not get tired of the process. He begets not nor is he begotten and there is none like him. He's independent of everything and everyone. Master Barak Muhammad is the great Mahdi who the whole world has been looking for. He's self-directed, self-sent, and independent. His father, who the governor of he never went and sent him to come and get me and you. He came his own self. They, they couldn't even tune in on him and know where he was going. Just like he remembered how to summon me, he remembered who we were. Right. The lost members of the God of the Shabbat. We are, you are a very, very ancient people. You are the last remaining members of that first self created God, his first original family. You are the last remaining members of that family. That's why he left heaven and came after you. Yes, right. You're the rightful owners. You're the one that inherits it all. It belongs to us. Is that clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. The devil don't want you to know this. That's right. That this is being taught to you. He's the one the whole world has been looking for. He's independent of everything and everyone, and there is none like him. In the Muslim world, he's called the 12th Imam, the Muntazar in Arabic, meaning the awaited one, who is the hidden Imam. He makes himself known at the end of the world. Just a little before the end, he comes forth 
knowing that which none of the other gods were forgiven you. With a divine mind superior to all the gods who were his great great grandfathers before him. He is the one described in the book of Revelation as one sitting on the throne with 24 elders sitting around him, submitting to his superior knowledge and wisdom and power and authority. And he's holding up a book in his right hand, sealed with seven seals. And he asked the 24 scientists around him, who's worthy to come and take the book out of my hand? They all begin to cry because none of them were worried. Think over this. Here's got these 24 elders sitting around him. He's on the throne. They're bound to him. They couldn't keep their crowns on in his presence. They had to take off their crowns. They couldn't keep them on in the presence of him with all this superior knowledge that he has. So they, they were throwing their crowns into him. We, we bow to your superior knowledge. So he holds this book up in his right hand. And he said, which one of you are worthy now? This book has been sealed up for a long, long time. Which one of you are worthy to come up and take it out of my hand and break the seal and read what it says therein? He said, they begin to cry because none of them was worthy. Then one of the elders said, don't weep no more. We've got someone. we found someone. The lion from the tribe of Judah. Think about this. They looked out in the midst of the throne, in the midst of the four beasts, and the 24 elders, there was a lamb that looked like he'd been dead, looked like he'd been slain. Think about this now. And he had been dead. He comes up and takes the book out of his right hand. Give me that book. He didn't give it to him. He took it. Give me that book. It belongs to me. Just think over that. And when he took the book, the 24 elders had to bow down to the Lamb. Yes, sir. And the one on the throne. Think about the two of one. Right. Had to bow down to that one. So we say all praise is due to all. Yes, sir. The Lamb said he's worthy to receive honor and riches, wealth, and greatness. That's Elijah Muhammad. Yes, sir. All the teachers out here, they should be teaching you how great. That's why the people aren't coming in. They're not teaching you who Elijah Muhammad really is. Right. They're not teaching you who you really are. Yes, sir. They're not teaching you who the God is. Yes, sir. Just think about it. I heard Mr. Farrakhan on here an hour before the world. Right. He didn't even mention Allah's name in the whole hour. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not to mention Master Muhammad. Yes, sir. He only mentioned Elijah Muhammad's name once. As a teacher, never taught the people that that's the last and greatest method of God. That's right. That's right. In fact, he thinks he's the last and greatest method of God. Right. Did you hear what he said that he made? Now, I'm, there's no one, there's no one in recent time that has right. as yes, many sir. people, you know, oh, the power to be the best of me. Here's something to think about. Yes, yes sir. In yes, other sir. words, he's the greatest in recent time, no one, that's greater than Elijah Muhammad. Yes, sir. Greater than Master Farad Muhammad. Yes, sir. I know when you see you up there clapping, I say 85%, you don't know when to clap and when not to clap. Uh -huh. You don't know when to fold and when to hold. Uh -huh. Exactly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But we sit back, we know this. In fact, Elijah Muhammad, in his preparation of being able to defend his name in the last days, one of the main things he put emphasis on is never to be proud. That's right. You understand? Yes. Sir. Always be humble and submissive. Yes. Right, he said, man, to Barack Muhammad, when you meet him, he's the most humble, meekest, submissive man you ever saw in your life. He remember all the power. Power to destroy the universe. When you see him, he's so meek and humble and submissive until you would just run over, overlook him. Because he's meek and humble and submissive. If you meet Elijah Muhammad, I can see him right now. When he was teaching me this, when he walked over there to me, he said, come so humble, so submissive. Just like a little baby lamb. You think of He told me, he said, never be proud. He said, all the people on earth begin to praise you at one time. He said, don't act proud. When we get on and we go before the devil, what we should be, before, our opening word should be, this is the Lord of the Rockies. Right, yes, sir. The name of our Lord of the Rockies. Yes, yes, sir. You know, so all that men from the east when they come in, if they're holy men from the east, right. Right. before they open their mouth, they say, this is the Lord That's Rockies. right. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, another question is, say, inshallah, Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. Yes, sir. That's right. Be willing. Yes. That's right. You don't act proud and arrogant. Do you understand? When you act for arrogant, in other words, proud you, then you're, you're bound to fall. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So he taught me. He knew what my future was, but he told me no matter what happens, he said, you remain humble and meek and submissive. He told me, he said, oh, Allah hates a proud man. He used the word hate. He didn't say don't like a proud man. He said he hates a proud person. So don't come up acting proud because Allah will not accept you being proud. Is that clear? Yes, yes sir. That's why he takes you through all these tests and trials to humble you. So you won't be proud. One time we come in, you know you got a big pocket full of money, you want your house, you got your big car, you know how you are. You're arrogant. You got your right. money in the devil's bank, in other words, and you walk all proud. Uh -huh. Oh, we got to take it all for next time we see you in a cardboard box, and now you go. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. If 
you won't get yourself together, get your act together, acting proud and won't accept those laws, that's what you're going to be. You're going to be in a cardboard box. Right. This economy is going to be a collapse. It's going to be a world economic collapse. Right. Worse, ten times worse than it was in 1930. Uh -huh. yes, so you're not going to be proud now. It is written, every knee shall bow. Right. Every tongue will confess who the God is on, on that day. Think about this now. That don't, is it, is it, he said it, every knee's going to bend. Don't that include your knees as well as my knees? Yes, sir. Don't that mean the devil knees go by? Yes, yes, sir. He said every nation on earth will be down on their knees. Think about this now. And you'll find there's only one God, Almighty God, our Lord, the King of all kings. Yes, yes, right. The God of all gods. Yes, right. He think over this. And he's going to deliver his people. Put you in heaven while you live. Not after you're dead. At while you live. $17 million homes. He said the ones who built them don't even know who they're building them for. $17 million homes. It's written that Jesus said in the Bible, I go to my father, I go to my father's house to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you may be also. And in my father's house, there are many mansions. You never understood that. You had it all spooked up in your, in your mind. So look at that. That's Elijah Muhammad said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. That where I am, you may be also. So this is your last opportunity. This is the final warning that you receive. You think somebody else is coming to warn you. No one else is coming to warn you. The next one you see will be the executors coming to punish you, carry you to hell. Some are going to burn up with the devil, and the rest of these are going to be exiled to the Belgian Congo. If our Lord took those devils when they were first made, they were so devils when they were first made, he exiled them over into the hills and caves of Europe for 2,000 years. Right. Even though they had 6,000 years. The devils with the young who taught him was so terrible. He said, we got to put them to sleep. Let them forget that. And then we'll go back and remind them of the rest a little bit later on. You understand? The forgotten technology. He exiled them living with wolf dogs. Snakes. In fact, the whole entire monkey family, apes from Japan, all came from the time of the devil was in the case of Europe. Right. The Holy Quran says none can chastise as all love would chastise them. That's it. Right. And one day, all of a sudden, he sees them. And how terrible was my retribution. In other words, you've had plenty of time, plenty of warning. Look how long you've turned down a divine warning. From 1930, this is 1994, and you had the same warning. Yes, sir. So you made up your mind already. I'm never going to accept that. I don't care if you preach another 90 years. I'm not going to accept that. But then why is there any reason for the, for the time to be prolonged? You made up your mind. Okay, if you want to punish me, go ahead and punish me. But don't call for the punishment of our laws because none can punish us at our law. None can chastise as he chastises. While you're sitting here acting arrogant, right now you're going to a stroke and can't even move. Right, right. While you're talking acting arrogant, you, when I look up, we see you coming one side. Is that cheap? <laughs> yes, That's right. Put that on you any second. And he might do it. He's sitting out there right now with evil thoughts. Right. Right. He's right. tuning on what you're thinking. What we're all thinking. Right. He's tuning on what am I saying? If I'm teaching you wrong, he's tuning in on that. Right. Is that clear? Yes, sir. He's tuning on how you're accepting this truth in the final seconds, final hours. Make it plain, this is the end of it all. This is the end of the world. The end of the white man's world. Right. Yes, sir. You won't have no change. You won't have no world if they don't get rid of the devil. God and the devil can't move at the same time. Right. So God did not interfere. He said, why did you make a devil in the first place? He said, to show forth my power. That's, that's that God is all, is all wise and all powerful. That he can make a devil, allow one to be made. Then give the devil the power to rule for 6,000 years without interfering with the rulership. Do the thing you want to do, devil. If you kill all of God's people, go ahead and kill them all if you can in that 6,000 years. Right. Then he come forth, he said, in one day, <laughs> And destroy the devil's entire civilization without becoming a victim of his yes. civilization. Yes. If he's going to do it in one day, that means he's there on one day. Right. But destroy him in one day, one 24 hour period. One year it all begins. This is the year I think 1994 is when it begins. He's going to be gradually bringing him down to his knees. He says, step by step, degree by degree, from whence he knows not. So I thank you for coming. I thank you for listening. I hope I filled your head with some supreme knowledge and wisdom yes, as to who you are. Yes, we didn't invite you here to tell you who I am or who the, I invite you here to tell you who you are. Yes, right. The lost members of the God tribe of Shabbos. A lost tribe of gods. That's who we're trying to resurrect. The rightful owners of the planet Earth. And if you don't wake up, our lost one is divinely chastised. 
if you're not already under divine chastisement. So I thank you for coming. I've enjoyed speaking with you. This is a very deep subject to teach on. Right. Yes, sir. And I'm glad to talk to you. And, and I hope that you will come and be with us in these final hours. I mean, help us in these final hours. There's no one has nothing greater than this. I'll assure you of this. No matter where you go, they don't have nothing to compare with this. They can even teach this kind of thing because they don't go. Right. Has right. been revealed to them. That's right. You understand? Yes, sir. They don't have the authority to teach it. Yes, if they try to teach it, they couldn't because they don't have the authority. In the scriptures, it talks of the the Christ, and it refers to the Christ as God in the flesh or God incarnate. This is the Christians, but that this Christ was a man raised. From the dead. You have to set that man right? Yes. The yes. 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 with him. I am the Christ. Yeah, I bear you witness, dear yes. Messenger. Yes. 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 I bear you witness. Elijah Muhammad is, he's the one that you read up there in the Bible, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the light, and no man comes to the Father except he come by me. Now, they think that is Jesus of 2,000 years ago, but I want you to know that's talking about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the light, and no man, you can't get to God, you can't get to the Father unless you come through me first. I am the door. You got to come through the door to get into the house. Anyone that comes any way other than through the door, the Bible says, is a thief and a robber. If you try to climb in some other way other than coming through the door, then you don't belong in the house. That's a thief coming, entering in. Do you understand? That's a robber coming in, someone coming in to rob you. But the right man comes through the door. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So that's the way we are going. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, nobody can take his place. There's no prophets, no leaders, no teachers that can take his place. Is that clear? Yes, sir. And he's not dead as yet. One day he will die. All men die. But I'm saying to you, he's not dead as yet. Allah took him out in a secret, divine manner. We will see him again. Is that clear? The ones that don't want to believe that, let them believe anything they want to believe. Let them follow anything they want to follow, anyone they want to follow. I don't look ridiculous saying that Elijah Muhammad is not dead as yet. All the Christians are saying Jesus of 2,000 years ago is not dead. Now that is ridiculous, isn't it? But I'm just saying that Elijah Muhammad is not dead yet. No man can live no 2,000 years. Is that clear? And if he did live that long, you wouldn't recognize him when he came up. You wouldn't believe him. Picture a 2,000-year-old man walking up to you and telling you, well, I, I finally got here. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Jesus Christ. How old are you? Well, my last birthday, I was, I was 2,000. You'd laugh at him, wouldn't you? And then if you saw him around, walking around in the cemeteries, raising the dead, it's time to get up, children. It's time to get up. You put, you lock poor Jesus up. That's right. And don't let him go to some white church when he shows up. Remember, he's a black man. Picture him walking into some white church um, and saying, I'm Jesus. They would all, oh, there's a nigger in here. <laughs> He'd get lynched all over again. He'd have to run and they'd lynch him again, wouldn't they? Do you understand? Oh, that's ridiculous, isn't it? 
Let's keep that name right there on your tongue and in your mind, Elijah Muhammad. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about spray bullets. You don't have to worry about hair on collisions. You don't have to worry about the, the worst thing will happen to you is maybe a little cut finger. But nothing serious is not going to happen to you if you become a true believer and true father of Elijah Muhammad. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Let us rise and pray. With your head slightly bowed, now hold your hands out in a cup. Well, hold them up above your waistline. Put, your, put them together like you want somebody to put something in your hands and then want them. Take a look at me once, everyone. See how I got my hands up. See what I want my hands down, but up above your waistline, up this way, up a little higher. Yeah, that's right. Get up. That's right. Now you got them up there, right? Now repeat to me in silence. Our Lord, guide us among those whom Thou hast guided aright. And preserve us among those whom thou hast preserved. And befriend us among those whom thou hast befriended. And bless us in whatever thou dost grant us. And deliver us from the evils of what thou hast judged. For surely thou judges and none can judge against thee. And he whom thou befriends most surely is not disgraced. Blessed art thou, our Lord, Master Farad Muhammad, and exalted be thee above that which they associate with thee. I bear witness that nothing or no one deserves to be served or worshipped besides thee, O Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. And I bear witness that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is thy true servant and last apostle. Amen. In the name of Allah, the most merciful and the most wise, and in the name of his last and greatest messenger, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who teaches us not to do nothing to no one that you would not want done to yourself. And I was teaching you how to say your prayer. That's one form of prayer. We have many other forms of prayer, but this is one of the ones we use in the temple. There's many other forms of prayer. But this one here, if you notice, I, I said, hold your hand like you wanted someone to put something in it. You didn't want it to fall out. If you just get up there, you're like, you know, someone put something in your hand, it would fall out. We don't want you to pray with your hands down below your private parts, you understand? I want you to pray with your hands up above your waistline. Do you understand? This is the way Abraham prayed. This is the way Solomon prayed. This is the way Jesus prayed. Do you understand? When you stand and say, I solemnly swear to tell the truth, you're not like that. Solomon didn't swear like that, one hand on the book and one hand in the sky. Solomon swore like this. Do you understand? David swore like this. This is the way David prayed. This is the way Jesus, all the prophets of God, prayed like this to Allah. So you go on. I want you to go home and say a prayer to Allah for the first time. Let him hear your voice. We've been here for 430 years. Now the first time he heard your voice calling upon him. He's going to bless you so much and so fast it's going to scare you. Do you, do you need some blessings? He's the God that says, before you call, I will answer. That's the God we need to pray to. Thank to Master Farad Muhammad, Almighty God, for coming to save you and me. And the word that you have heard of him, please, Take them to heart. Go forth wherever you may go. Talk to you, messenger. And tell others of your kind. Yes, sir. That the Savior have arrived. Yes, yes sir. sir. Beautiful. Beautiful.